Well, I'm back. It's another day. I'm heavily caffeinated. My mind's been zooming for hours, doing a little bit of writing, but it's time to go outside. It's a beautiful day. I don't know what time it is. I should probably check that. And that's actually something that could go on a visitor's guide is what you can expect for comfortable times of the day. Like when would you shed your outer layer in the morning? And when should you make sure you have one in the night? Um, that may not matter, and sometimes the year when the days are very long, but since, uh, you know, the nights are there and you want to function, you're going to be uh, putting on your outer layer and taking it off each day. Well, you put it on first and take it off later. Um, because you want to use that morning time and then potentially use that evening time uh, for whatever it is that's useful, and that varies widely, of course. So that's actually a thing with, you know, how you dress can make you really comfortable in the space. And you might even have in the pockets of your outer layer some things that you would want if it was colder. And I don't know what that would be. But anyway, good luck. Oh, yeah, the actual reason we're here is um, I've got some guys coming to help me out. And I'm going to figure out what kind of labor could be done around here that would improve the area. And the reason this is interesting is because sometimes people want to come here in exchange for their labor. And I'll tell you right now, most physical, most people who come here cannot do physical labor uh, at anything close to the level of my local friends. And so I like to support my local friends and their families uh, in helping out with the project in any way that they can. And uh, also a lot of products from the forest here do go to them. Like uh, resin is collected here, collecting pine resin super common. And I don't take any money for that. Uh, that's because I like those guys and I like the town and it's a contribution. For me, it's a minor contribution. For them, it's, uh, it's an income, you know, and it's just a little bit because we don't do it everywhere. But then, you know, firewood goes out of here. Uh, we get branches and trees falling down all the time. There's a bunch of stuff that was blocking the road over there that somebody could just take. So anyway, there's people that benefit from these projects. And in this particular area, um, I'm doing something that's it's very odd. We're on the Mesa. We're back at the View Garden. If you're following these videos, I doubt many people are. But the, the thing is to learn about design by, by really exploring an example and setting rules and limits on how we develop it. What time is it? 10 o'clock, exactly. Super nice out. Now, I could have gotten out here earlier. It's true. Um, and it will heat up pretty soon. This, the sun becomes oppressively hot here. Um, and that's one of the reasons this whole garden is going to be very focused on increasing shade. The ideal is we topped all these trees off, right? This is a reminder on the view garden if you didn't, if you aren't tracking it well. Uh, we topped off all these trees. These are trees that grew here naturally after we cut down the pines. These are just coming in gangbusters, right? We got multiple species of pines. Like that baby pine is not the same species as that baby pine. That's because we've left enough trees to reseed it. And birds help probably. Um, and there's, so there's oaks and pines now. There's madrones in there. You know what? There's not as many madrones as I'd like. I think this would be a great place for direct seeding madrone experiments or somewhere around here. Um, it'd be ideal. Well, whatever. Once we get them going, they'll be fine. Uh, the, the challenge on this particular uh, garden then is to make this dense upper layer of... of um, trees we're topping them and then shaping the branches and then some of these trees will actually get removed and they will get replaced with trees we like more it could be because it has flowers all the time and the birds and the bees love it uh maybe it's a maybe it's a nut tree i really like nut trees i feel like they're solid and they just provide you this pre-packaged value fairly easily which is interesting because we had a walnut tree when i was growing up and boy did i hate it because uh, the fruit of it gets mushy and rotten and uh, texture of it grossed me out so other than that i think walnuts are awesome wow what a garden so at the moment the thing i need to do is actually focus on what kind of projects would occur in this area and it's a good example of some physical projects and also design projects and part of it the idea is to give people who think they want to trade their labor here an idea of uh what that looks like in this case now there's stuff all over the property that we need to get done but this has a nice variety so uh, this area over here we piled up a bunch of plant matter uh, this area is useful for other things uh, at least one car could pull right in there i think on the other side there's a spot for three more 
Um, it's possible that for now we'll make a parking spot and also camping spots. So car camping in this area. Now that's really weird because it has a really nice view of the lake right there. And normally I tell people that we want to reserve view for non-residential purposes since you're sleeping a lot at those. But I think that somebody, this is a very central camping location. And so this is a very good spot, for example, for vendors, it's very close to the view, or people have some special role. So this is not just general camping. This is people who, who are going to do something interesting, but it's messed up. Uh, it's got these piles of stuff which we could burn or we could haul them out and I mean it's too late now I mean the best thing to do when they're green is toss them into a rabbit coop you toss them into a big rabbit pen you know and the rabbits will eat a lot of these plants none of these plants are toxic so the other thing we got to do is get rid of some old stumps in there we got to uh, clear up these branches over here this is just a very high value location and so that means macheting them up or chainsawing them they're pretty thin and those could be used in, in stoves and for kindling and all sorts of stuff uh, so they're very useful branches it's just they're not very well located right there this looks like a flat spot right here it's not um, when you think about the flow of water you got to look at very subtle variations so there's actually a hill right here and then things kind of slope this direction right what we're probably going to do with this is dig it out and that sounds like a lot of work and it is and i can't use a bulldozer because it's too sensitive an area you know bulldozers are kind of big maybe if i had one of those little bobcats i could actually yeah i, I could use a small bobcat that would be awesome I've got tons of work that gasoline would be better than humans to do it because um, I want to dig this entire thing out so it's all flat so I even dig in between the trees and stuff right and then we'll see now we may leave some of it as hill like we could leave this part as hill here and then flatten here um, anyway the point is sorry you're not even here it's hard to tell what, what I'm talking about but um, the point is to to make this area highly useful right and for i mean the, the longer term plan i have a long term plan we'll skip that so this is just about like me thinking about what people should do now i'm not going to have the team from yota tiro dig this out right now because that's not even close to priority i got plenty of spaces i gotta fix and so like right now i mean i added things to the list today and uh i already have a good list with, with those with those guys and uh fuck, i just saw a woodpecker go over there by my house and they peck on the wall they're pecking th holes through the wooden walls so annoying anyway so other things around here i have my notebook i actually have to think of what i want these dudes to do still want stumps covered up i just don't like them and i you know they just last forever the last over 10 years just sitting there being a stump so um pragmatic things over here i can have these guys clean up uh, some rocks and stuff in a spot that i sometimes put the van the van's right here right and it's it's too much blocking the road and so oddly enough i mean if we're going to have people visiting which we do uh, or have had and, and there will be more later then we need to plan now for where we want those cars to go rather than letting it be a clusterfuck of of people parking all over the place and uh, blocking roads and things like that in this case i'm blocking the road but there's a road that goes right by it there's a double road here at the view how'd this leash get over here jesus there's just like a leaf sitting here on the ground and it's got to be probably my fault because i was the last person to use it with shiva the dog who's over here all right so we're looking for what happens soon not later this was hung in a really weird way uh, i found a spot for it uh, trying to figure out what to do on this floor and the view. It's all dusty. It's an earth floor. Earth and floor sounds so nice. It's not treated with anything. And it's very dusty. So even if a dog is sitting in here and likes you and they wag their tail, then they, their tail stirs up dust all around you. So, and then, and then the wind blows dust. And if you're trying to use a computer out here, use your camera to talk into or sit there, you know, then everything gets dusty. So this all needs to become cement. I can't do that with the team I've got. I just got two people. Uh, neither one of them is very strong <laughs> they work hard as hard as they can but uh you know they're just not concrete mix and team you know so i would have to contract with somebody else for that um this whole area this whole entry is pretty junky 
Um, these trees have developed nicely, and so really what I'm looking at is these trees as part of the whole aesthetic. Um, I rather like how they've developed. This uh, madrone is blocking a porch up there, but you know, madrones block in a very aesthetically pleasant way. So we could top it. I'm tending to think we won't. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, we've already topped off this, uh, this, this um, oak right here. And so we start to look under it and see, you know, where do we want traffic to flow? We want to decrease the human footprints. We want to make nice wide trails since this is a very common place people come. But design-wise, we want to keep them from walking all over the place. Because if they walk all over the place, then they squish the ground down when what we should be doing is actually, I mean, we have an open area over here that's all trampled and that's fine. You know, we, that's given over that purpose. But anywhere else around the edges of it, we want to be careful that when, if there's more people here, or even few people, that they don't trample the ground down, trample it down, because uh, that is exactly what happens all the time. Let's take a look over here. This is a more near-term project, an immediate project. Uh, and the, this is uh, the pea garden, right? Now, I've written about pea gardens online. The, what they do is they're a great complement to composting toilets because they reduce the liquid load in the composting toilet and they magically make the pea go away. I believe this is the best, simplest way to rapidly set up your system to deal with pea. If you want to do more complex things with pea in other cases, that's neat and I'm for it, but this is a just really great way to get rid of most of your problem. Uh, you could have a spot for women to sit down and then there's a system you could have a spot where men stand up. In this case, there is a floor up there, right up there, and there's a funnel. Well, there was a funnel. I'll tell you about that. Uh, that goes into this tube, this black tube. It goes down under the ground. It goes over to this hole right here, which didn't used to be a hole. First, we dug a big hole, we stuck a bucket, a five-gallon bucket, upside down underneath it, stuck the tube in the top of the bucket, siliconed around it, and then we buried it with very rich dirt, or the best dirt we had, which is Tierra de Encino, composted oak leaves. You're going to hear about that a lot if you get used to knowing about the Bosque. Anyway, um, that did great. We planted it, and the plants really liked it. All the urine was stuck underground, like over a meter and a half, something like that. And the bucket keeps it from getting clogged. The tube, the tube doesn't get clogged because it's got a really big mouth uh, that is all um, not clogged. Now, it may get clogged someday. Maybe we'll have to dig this up someday. That's fine, but it serves its purpose. And I've peed up there for years filling this spot. Anyway, it was a nice garden before. But what has happened? Why does it look like a piece of crap? And how come I don't have a funnel up there anymore to pee into? These are big problems. I'll tell you what went wrong with the pea garden. Uh, well, it isn't wrong. First of all, I had a metal funnel up there in a wooden thing that I would pee into, right? Well, what happened was the urine, I don't know if it's what its attributes are, but um, basically it, it corroded through the metal at one of the seams on the, on the funnel. Now, maybe a different funnel would work better out of metal. Right now, I'm thinking a large plastic funnel. I got to find one. Like I've seen funnels they use to dump oil into cars. Like those seem like they're about the right size. You know, anyway, so you pee into the funnel, uh, and I got to rebuild the funnel, and then it goes down here. It's all underground, so there's no smell. It's actually composting below the below the ground. Um, we experimented with it, and I was wondering, like, would there be so much urine that the plants wouldn't be able to grow over it because their roots would go down? They there was no circle of death or anything, uh, which does happen if you pee out your window, like I've been doing on the other side of the of the view uh, since this broke. I just pee out the window. Uh, now that I'm living upstairs again. Anyway, so so this all sunk down over time. Oh, there was no problem with the plants, you know. Anyway, this all sunk down over time because the Terra de Encino is not very dense. That's one of the reasons that it's, it's very productive. You know, roots go through it easily. So what I'm thinking we'll do, and then, oh, somebody dumped branches into it, right? Now, we're going to refill this with dirt. We're going to put more Terra de Encino on top. And I'd be okay if we mixed other things in, but you know what? Just doing Terra de Encino will just result in more and more productivity. So maybe if we always store our first dirt, our best dirt into the place where it's getting nitrogen and all these fertilizer from the pea, you know, and the roots are going down, I don't know how close to the pea. I don't, I don't care what's going on down there. It's all working out. So, so anyway, the, one of the questions I have is, should we leave these sticks here or not? Okay, so think about it. We're going to dump a bunch of Tierra Dancino composted oak leaves on top of this. 
Do we leave the sticks there or not? Well, my thoughts are, they're kind of weird, not really part of the system normally, and they're kind of in the way, and I never told anyone to dump them in there, and it's annoying that they got dumped in there in the first place. Um, people do bury stuff for hugo culture. In fact, two of these are poles that are supposed to be useful for something. They're not even supposed to be in there. Anyway, hugo culture is a popular idea where you basically bury wood. They bury them in fancy lumps and stuff and running things. But um, I could just bury the wood and it will rot. And that's actually kind of cool. And I could even toss in some mushroom spores, you know, and see if that does anything. So it could be that I could use the microclimate for more than just planting, but also uh, rotting wood and, and fungus reproduction or something. It's a little bit of a long shot. And this is my first pea garden, so I'm not sure I want to do that experiment here on this one. But it would be a great experiment, especially on a fairly high volume one. Well, maybe. Because my other concern is that I may have to dig this up and get at the bucket. Let's say it got, got, got clogged up somehow. If it, if it stopped draining, then I would have to dig it up. So I'm assuming this is a system I'm going to have to mess with. And so unless these sticks completely rot, I can't do that function. I cannot fix it. And so that's a reason, another reason not to do the wood here. So I'm, I'm back to thinking, no, no sticks here. I don't know what conclusion you came to. But these are the kind of things we've got to think about on a very simple system. This is just such a minor decision, like, do we bury wood there or not? Anyway, my, my thought is no. It won't take more than, uh, you know, eight minutes to haul those out of there. We can use them to do something else with. Uh, so, yeah, that's on the to-do list. Uh, I have a weather station over there. It is, it is all grown over between branches. I can't even get to it. So we got to get that bucket with a pole in it out of there, set that weather station up a lot better, change the batteries in it, because I think it uses batteries, uh, change the batteries in the control station, and then get the weather system going again. So a little bit of work there. That's actually a fun little project. This whole grove of trees does not have a clear identity yet. The pea garden is obviously one part of it, but there's ex ex extra space in there, so we should uh, clear out the underbrush a little bit, leave the trees as they are, see what we're working with, and maybe we can come, kind of design a really pleasant spot to sit right out here. I think protected by the trees and stuff because we have open areas right over here nearby but this would just be a great spot for I mean it has some view and uh, well I mean these trees will kind of block the view and then we could decide on planting it more heavily we do have a grafted uh, cherry here on a on a on a hawthorn tree and uh, we have four pieces all together that we've grafted onto that guy now one of the to-do items on that is to continually be checking it for things growing in the wrong spot. Uh, oh shit, this is dangerous. I almost pulled these, uh, these things off of here, these little green leaves, because I thought it might be part of the original plant. But it's exactly coming up where the, where the grafted piece goes in. So I actually think that is a huge, successful, happy looking little uh, cherry thing. And of course, I'd love to get cherries here. We can't do grafting this time of the year. Um, also in here, other types of work we wanna do is, uh, well, generally clean it up. Like, why is there firewood sitting on a chair? You know? This is a really great spot, the view, but it needs a lot of help. I think um, this is a tough one, this little island of trees out here. Uh, I do want a little sitting spot right in the middle. Other than that, I think it's gonna be really hard to do plantings and control anything. Um, and I'm not sure far how, how far out to go with it. We could put red hot pokers in here in the rainy season. Those do really well. They're easy plants and we can always move them later. So I would recommend for that little island uh, that we, you know, leave some spots to cross through it. Like, one, like just after these trees, make sure we can cross over. But I think we could put a few red hot pokers headed towards this capoline right here. And now this is pretty tight, you know, but I really want to reduce footprint, and so I think we should also put firewood around this capoline and leave these oaks here. These are oaks in here. Um, you know, we can always cut stuff down later. And so in this case, I actually, in this critical juncture, I want to actually protect it by planting it more, and then no one will drive over that stuff. Um, this is that parking spot I was mentioning. I want to level this out a little bit there's just some grasses in here I don't want if it was wetter out I'd burn them um, I've got a whole bunch of tiles over here those are great um, 
somebody could actually back into those if they were parking backwards here like i almost did that and so we don't want that to have happen so we need poles that indicate where you park also these should get used somewhere it almost doesn't matter where that's a dumb thing to say it does matter where it's a resource and we want to up our game and get more spaces for things and people and stuff um i'm not sure where they should go uh, tiles are generally a weird roofing material that has some real big disadvantages actually and so we would only put that on a fairly low structure we could make some really simple covered camping areas you know but then i think okay i'll do wooden poles okay but then wooden poles rot so do we do concrete poles Co concrete poles don't look great you know and they're kind of harder to make than just slapping up a tiny structure you know and and then you think okay well i'll do wooden poles that we set into a, a concrete or rock base and that actually isn't bad it's a pretty good choice um you could always replace the pole later i suppose and uh you know the problem is under tiles wood rots so your wood slats that are up there are going to rot and so essentially you're building something that isn't built well enough to last very long on the other hand you can rebuild it i guess and uh Anyway, this whole area here needs to get cleaned up too. I've got cool rocks right here. This was a circle of, of adobe. I want to pull all of the rebar out of here. Uh, people don't always do what I say. It pisses me off immensely. I said don't use any rebar in it. This is an all clay structure here. Now I've got a piece of rebar sitting right here. Now you might say, big deal. It's just a piece of rebar. Well, first of all, it looks ugly. And people do criticize me if things look ugly, of course. I want it to look pretty, but it's a huge amount of work. Uh, the second thing is somebody could fall, so it's actually a life safety thing. Now, we're not currently using this space, so the likelihood of someone falling here is about zero. But um, the point is, I don't want random pieces of sharp, dangerous metal hanging around in, in places. Like, that's why we don't stick wire in trees, except for the exceptions. Um, so anyway, that, I get frustrated. I mean, I just walk around and I get frustrated. That's one of the reasons I want this, this team to, to be able to improve spaces so that I can host people better in more useful ways and also it kind of aesthetically pleasing, ideally. Uh, this is uh, vetch here, these purple flowers. Um, we cleared this out here and, and it was moisture before and so the vetch was doing okay before and now I think it's not liking the spot as much. So we want to make sure we collect seeds on that because it took me years to get seeds. I got them from a neighbor but I didn't know that neighbor very well, so it took a while. Um, all the rest of this, we want to clear out certain types of plants. Harachina. We can cut that all we want. It just comes back anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, we don't want to cut any of the, until we clean it up, any of the oaks or any of the madrones. Certainly uh, certainly not. And, uh, and then pines. There's pines in here. This is a bush here. It's interesting to note that it is a native bush. And... I don't see a lot of them so therefore I want to not cut them down I want to protect them and, and help them propagate any plant that there's less of here that's native we want to adjust systems water flow spaces collect seeds if we need to figure out a way to protect that plant and then to encourage it it already wants to live here now you notice I haven't even mentioned what the plant is or what use it has I don't know that. I don't know the name of that tree. It might be in the spreadsheet. We have a big spreadsheet of uh, all these plants. But um, the point is it's here and it grows on its own in the natural rain cycle and probably has seeds that birds eat or something or who, who cares, you know? Bees may like it part of the year. It might flower when something else isn't flowering, you know? And so we don't have to understand uh, the system to say okay any plant that's that's rare or any spot that has rare plants like less less of them then uh, let's protect that space and improve that space and that should just be a general philosophy i mean if we if we went with that general philosophy we would probably not be you know causing extinctions the way we are <sighs> uh, i've got a bunch of sticks over there at the basketball court that came from cutting down a really rapidly growing acacia tree when people talk about uh, producing things or having trees here that grow really fast, I have opinions about that, generally negative. Um, but I do have the acacias, and I don't know if they're native or not. Uh, you can't really tell, you know, unless you're a botanist who reads about the history of plants and things. But um, this whole area up in here is really interesting. Let's walk over there. So I'm walking around the edge 
of the new view garden, the ones going to have trails through it and have all these little cubby holes and stuff. Uh, this got cleared. That's great. Yeah, there used to be a trail right. Oh, they cleared a spot to the big swing. That's great. Oh, that's, I can walk over there. Ah, oh, this is great. Anyway, uh, the succulents are doing great up here. We should do massive reproduction of those during the next rainy season. We have ones that were put in five years ago. Now they're like a small bush of succulents. And each one of those can make 40 more plants anywhere we want because they do well. We don't have to think about it because we already know it works, you know. This area in here I could develop much better. Uh, We've already started that by clearing out the base, the underlying brush. God damn, there's no trail here. Oh, oh it's great I can walk this well, though. I'm so happy about being able to walk around. Ah. This is a, uh, a uh, tire swing. One has to wonder how come there's a huge stick right through the cable thing. Oh, it's to keep it from... What the heck is going on around here? Fuck. Okay, somebody did a hack fix on this that makes the swing have a, a stick that pokes out and will stab someone in some way. If it can happen, it will happen. Oh, wow, this is great. This must have fallen out of a dead branch. Uh, branch dies, right? Woodpeckers come and they dig little holes in it and they store acorns in the holes. This is up there in the branches. This one fell down. Yeah, there's dead branches up there. And so even any dead branches that are up, to, up in a tree can actually be a good thing. <sighs> yeah, that's the uh, big tire swing. It's, it's had some fun, but it's in an out-of-the-way location. Location matters a lot, big surprise. Rawr. God damn it. Uh, the whole mesa can be developed for mixed use. This particular area I'm thinking of is camping, uh, I think. I have a, there's a, a path back there that has been a, almost a road at times. Oh, this is great to be able to walk around back in here. Uh, I mean, it's re really wonderful to see all the massive amounts of underbrush grow up here, but it gets in the way of thinking about spaces as well. And it's okay, I love it. It's great for wildlife and stuff. Oh, more of these pieces of wood with acorns. Actually, I kept that one actually out grab it for like a nature shelf thing to show how life in the forest works this area has ended up more cleared than I was expecting it was because I had to cut down some big pines and those that's because I want to put a building over there and that building is going to be in the perfect site to have a larger solar power system you know I want to have like I, you know I see pictures of people's solar power systems and I've never felt I needed that much you know I don't need to cover half my house in solar panels um, and I have criticisms, in, in a way, I guess, of people who do that. You can probably hear the underlying criticisms. But, uh, but you know, if I'm going to have people here, then I need electricity. And I also need a better design system. I mean, the one I have is fine. 340 watts works for me. But that's nothing. I just saw a picture of an RV, and they had, like, four times what I got. I was a little jealous. I think they have fold-up ones. So they were an angle and everything. Anyway, I... Uh, Also, we cut the pines, we cut the acacias, and then what this does is it gives an awesome southern exposure for solar. If you live in a forest this dense, it's quite dense, then most of the places you would want to put a solar panel, it would be impossible to put solar panel. It would not work, because it would be blocked by the trees all the time. And so what I'm doing is I'm creating a really important spot right here. There's already electricity run out to here, we can run electricity out of here. And we can put a building right here. Pretty big. It's on a flat spot. It's not dug in. It will connect to another building is dug in uh, towards the uh, near the bliss view of the lake kind of place. So I'm imagining from like four stories, which is almost breaking design rules for me because three is a, like the maximum they suggest in a, in, a, in a pattern language book. But then I could also have raised walkways that go off of it. The primary target for a raised walkway from here would be to get to the slope of Gaia. So have it be probably two stories tall, fairly wide, maybe a story and a half, I don't know, but a truck has to be able to get under it, right? So you're looking at a raised walkway, but really think of it almost like a road. It should be set up for fairly high density of, of traffic. 
foot traffic. And then you're raised up among the trees, right? And you go off and you get to this hill over here, which has a bunch of other really cool plans for it. Um, the other option, and this is not a bad option, because I, well, that's a tough one too. The other option is over near the Barranca on the Mesa. I've got a lot of sun over there. This is a more central location. And I, I you know, I don't know. I mean, that spot is planned to have a building as well. I think that's the best use for it that I, I think of right now. Most all of this remains forest. That remains forest. This remains forest. Unknown future of that grove. Anyway, we're, I'm off topic. What do we need to do? Right here, we need to get rid of these branches. And the way I'm doing that is by getting my guys to ask, you know, find somebody who wants free branches. There are people who use wood for, for their stoves and stuff. And I've given away a lot of branches, but this particular spot has a bunch. They look ugly. They're in my way. Uh, somebody could use them. And so, yeah, there's a bunch of work to get those out of here. We could cut them up with a chainsaw. No problem. I just need labor to do it. And I don't have a big enough team right now to, I mean, I, I, I'm having them water. It takes three hours to water the plants twice a week. That's six hours a week just watering some plants. That doesn't include all the other cool plant stuff we like to do. Um, these are the stack of poles here we got. These are from the acacias, right? And these are super useful for something. It's no problem that they're out in the out here in the outdoors. Um, they won't rot very quickly this time of year. It would take them forever. So they're fine there. We've got this tiny little building here with electricity. This is the farthest out the electric goes from my electric, from my solar panels, and that was for unknown use out here. It was a volleyball court right here. Uh, why is there roofing on the floor, on the ground? And why is there a bucket over there? Ah, basically, we just have to civilize these spaces. Um, this is all filled with tusas in here, pocket gophers. So they make holes that make you trip and fall into them and stuff. You don't really fall into the hole, but your foot does. And you could twist an ankle. Look at this guy. This is another continual to-do item here in the forest. Uh, this is, guess what? You've seen it in other videos. This is a grafting, and it's uh, the lower part is hawthorn, and that's what's coming out the sides here. These two little sticks here are cherry or they're apple, or there's a variety of other things we graft onto this particular tree. So this is very successful, though, because uh, the, the tree's doing fine. We didn't kill it. I'm going to pull the hawthorn things off, but I'm going to be really careful not to pull off something that is actually grafted onto there. Um, usually it's very obvious. In this case, the stuff that was grafted onto it has a tiny little bit of leaf right there coming out. See that? So that's good. We wouldn't want to hurt that. Down here, this is coming off of the rootstock. We can get rid of those. And those outer pieces grew up pretty big. And that annoys me because the original plant then is taking all the energy. And the plant that I actually want there is not getting any. Uh, good enough. So there's another one over here. This one does not have the same problem. Oh, yes, it does. This is something, holy shit, this is something grafted on the capulene. Wow, that's pretty cool. I could leave a little piece of capulene on there so that we can identify the rootstock. I think that would be useful because what rootstock we use totally changes the effect, right? And so this is all suckering off the bottom and stuff. Somebody else with a machete will have to fix that or some clippers. Anyway, we've got the grafting up here. No signs of life on it yet. I am betting, I'm betting, and I think I remember, because we do so many small uh, experiments, it's hard to remember them all. I'm betting that, uh, that that is cherry on capulene, and capulene is black cherry, and so you know we have tons of it. Most of it produces no fruit for some unknown reason. Yeah, there's just like a random bucket out here. Good Lord. Anyway, but this is very much in progress. There's tons of work to do here. Um, I need to define which are going to be the trails, and then we want to stop using anything else as a trail. So we very rapidly want to get all traffic in this area. I mean, right now it's just a mess because we have to walk around and do everything. But I wanted to find that main trail through it right away, and then start to define alcoves off the edges. Those poles could actually be useful for that, and we could lay them down horizontally on the ground um, to indicate where things are barriers. Uh, I don't like that either that much. I've, I've done it before. They tend to get kicked around a little bit. Um, I could use colored stakes, and I've done that. That works pretty well as, as, as well. Uh, 
I think the best thing for defining a space like that is, I think in this case, like red hot pokers and rosemary and things like that, plants that we use to say, we know this is not going to be a trail. So we stick in a plant that we know is going to succeed. Uh, the red hot pokers are immediate. I mean, we, we propagate those via division while we do rosemary by cuttings. So the rosemary would take longer. Now, the other problem with that, though, is I've got a surplus of red hot pokers, which means they're less exotic. They're not as cool, you know. I know they'll do well, but for the long-term development of space, what do I do? Well, it seems like red hot pokers would be a mistake, but we always dig up red hot pokers later anyway and divide them. And so we could dig them up and move them out. So there may be a good choice to rapidly um, control the movement of people in the space. Why is there another bucket over here? <laughs> a five gallon buckets are totally useful. See, this is like a useful bucket. But like, why are they here? Oh shit. That bucket is covering up electrical thingy. Uh, we have buried electrical cords in the ground. I don't want any aerial electric lines. It's one of my design requirements of the space. Okay. This is done very badly. Okay, so I should put that on a list of crap that guys could help with. Just uh, reposition that bucket better. Also, I might want to put a color on it. I think painting on stuff is good. Not a very big, like, loud color, but just something to indicate what it is, why there's a bucket right there. Here's a hawthorn that has not been grafted, by the way, and it has little flowers on it at the moment. It's so pretty. Uh, we're back now at the cedar circle. This is, is a circle of cedar trees, which I need to plant more in this, this rainy season. It's coming along really great. I need to tie the tops of these trees together to make a dome. And uh, I think that's important. I thought about just shaping the, the limbs, the branches, and just kind of letting it close in up there naturally. Not good enough. We're going to have to get the the top of those trees to point at each other. And that means going on a ladder with people holding the ladder and tying a string on it. You know, we could pull it down with a hook or something maybe, but we've got to get string around it and then make strong enough string to start uh, building this dome thing. It's not going perfect. Uh, there was a cedar there that died. There should be another cedar right there, I believe. Um, there could be another cedar right here on the entryway. So we want to reduce entryways also, it's very likely that, um, that the trail should actually go outside of the cedar dome and connect with a trail that goes that way. This is kind of the more public south end of this park. And then, uh, really, it's tempting to close up this, this exit here. Uh, basically, we should plant and close up anything we can, and it's low cost to plant things and then sculpt into it. So I think we should overpopulate it with, with our sculpture-like trees, you know, in this case, cedar, and then worry later about the details of that. So, hola, señor, ¿cómo está? Buenos días. Bien. Mejor cada semana. So that's a neighbor guy passing through. He's a real nice guy. Um, so we're talking about generally work up here. The thing is that uh, if you, you know these people that want to come and trade labor for their stay, I can have them do it. Uh, they should still pay because I want them to use the best resource that they have to support the Bosque project. And the best resource they have is probably not their labor in about 90% of the cases. The best thing they can do is use their contacts to promote the project, to get donations for it, and they can support their stay that way. Because somebody's got to be able to support them. And right now I don't have people here because I can't pay for them. You know, and they cost a lot. I'm willing to give all of my time. I'm willing to give my energy, my experience, uh, the space. But I don't have anything left to live on anyway. And so uh, for the people who want to come here and trade their labor, they got to figure out what the actual equation is going on here. You know, they're entering into a system that doesn't have an income. And they are actually the best person to help in that regard with what's actually needed. Lots of these projects out here have been on hold a long time. These don't have to happen, right? Now they do have to happen if the Bosque is gonna serve as a, as a sustainability laboratory, as a design space, uh, using, you know, with people and living systems being close together without destroying each other. 
mainly us destroying the forest. Um, and so these experiments, I think, are really important. And so when somebody thinks they're excited about the project, I want to hear how they actually are going to support it because that's what I need. And so physical labor done by visitors is fine, but the thing is you can't drive them hard. You can't have any expectations. Uh, they spend a lot of time talking or standing around. Uh, they have trouble following directions. Some of them, their bodies are weak, then they've never used tools or anything. And this is hard work if you're actually going to do it. Even the easy work, you know, can be tiring. You know, grafting, for example, the things we looked at, the grafts are fairly easy to do and they're easy to clean up. But if you're going to be digging and then in this sun, that's really hard work, you know, and certainly we can schedule things so that, you know, certain types of work happen earlier in the morning and certain things later. Like right now, for example, we're, we're, the guys are down there watering some plants. It'll take them about three hours, right? Well, that's great and it's really important. And I'm using that water more this year than any other. But we should be watering in the afternoon, the late afternoon, just before nightfall comes. And that water would all soak in better. So right now we're losing a lot of water because these guys come here in the morning. Ideally, there'd be somebody on site and we would water, you know, an hour before dusk or for three hours before dusk or whatever. But that water then isn't lost by evaporation because we're probably losing half or more. I don't know what the numbers are, but they're not good. It's, it's, it's things the, the, the things are designed incorrectly because I don't have a team here to work on a variety of things. If there was a person who wanted to be a manager of the the space here. Now I have friends I work with already and they know a lot of stuff, but if somebody actually wanted to manage people who wanted to come here in exchange for labor, they would essentially be a, a volunteer manager and that would help me immensely. I don't have anyone that is, has fit that role uh, or that wants that role, um, but that's a possibility. And there could be more than one, it depends. I have space here for infinite camping and about 23 beds I think, and I could easily jack that up to 30 beds probably. And then if the system's actually working, I can rapidly build more simple housing. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of things that could change, uh, but anyway, I'm out here looking at what the guys do, you know, picking up this firewood right here, there's no reason it's there, big stack of firewood over there, at least put that firewood with that firewood, we have one stack, um, it's all rotting anyway, I might as well give it away to somebody, practically, if I'm not going to use it, if it's just going to rot, on the other hand, every one of them, I always got to, you know, question everything I say. You should not believe anything I say because I don't believe it. You know, I question it all. So the other thing is it's, it's a kind of a nice stack of wood. It's unfortunate we put a lot of labor into it and cutting it up. But um, we could throw mushrooms on that and see what happens. So in mushroom season, which is with the rains, we could just toss mushrooms on that, maybe a little bit of dirt, maybe some pterodans, you know, or not. It doesn't matter. But the point is, is that watching that thing rot is instructive for us. And we could also toss a few plants on it and see if there's certain ones that really like that. For example, nasturtiums grow super well where there's rocks. I've got some black rocks over here. And we're going we're gonna, to uh, plant it with nasturtiums. Um, that, we can also plant with nasturtiums or just a dozen other things too to see what likes it. We, we can learn about just even that minorest of microclimates right there. This is an interesting case. This is a major intersection right here, and I'm tempted to try and narrow it down, make it so uh, you can't get through it as easy and you don't have as much road, basically. I want to reduce the total amount of road, but that's really tough right here. This is a very, very important intersection, and it's probably a good spot, actually, if anything, to keep it wider. Like, there's some branches here. We could clear those, have kind of a, a pullout right there. Uh, I'm tempted to take this corner and, and plant it this direction into the intersection. In this case, I don't think it's worth it, you know. The other corner is not really a problem. So yeah, basically it's going to just be a spot like that. And that may affect how we use spaces around it. I know that I'm going to try and fill in dirt in that direction anyway. So essentially this becomes almost like a intersection plaza combination. But I'd recommend we try and keep it fairly open or make very good decisions about any changes we make here because we want that transportation to work really well. Oh, I see a dog who didn't show up to dinner last night. Wait, that's not... No, it's a different dog. Same color. Dang it, where the hell is Cabron? Cabron is a dog. He did not come to dinner last night, so we didn't get any. Hope he's okay. Yeah, I think that wraps it up for this... Uh, particular conversation about work around here. Need to fix up the roof over here where a storm has taken the thing off. I guess we're not done. 
uh, and it just needs a nail there to nail it down because the wind is making it flap up and down, then it's going to break off and then the fucking whole terrassa comes down eventually. We've already got pieces of, of a beam that were sticking out from under the roof. That's against the fucking rules here because now I have rotted wood things and that's going to get to the larger beams and then rot the beam and then the roof will start to collapse, which already happened at the casita. If we're going to build shit, we got to build it right. No hippie dumbass shit. Think like an engineer. You know, we got thousands of years of human evolution. I don't want people coming here and winging it with their bad skills. And I'm talking to myself here. I'm no expert. And the guys I hire sometimes are not experts. Uh, but, you know, everything has to be built better and also built for climate change. Like this roof is really shallow right here. Now, I don't expect snow here. I mean, this is a weird roof. But we need to plan as if there was going to be a big snowstorm. There has been snow up in the mountains before, one time in 17 years. And, uh, you know, we can expect some big climate events to occur. That's one of the reasons I want to dig in a lot. This gets into a huge amount of work. Anything we build, I want to dig it in. Now, it's a lot easier to do that with a bulldozer. But in some of the places I want to build, I can't get a bulldozer in there or don't want to because I really want to meld us into the forest. You know, I don't want to clear everything around every building. Although, for fire reasons, we definitely have to consider a few things. Um, now, that's infinite amount of hand digging. I've got Alicante down there, a park I'm working on. It's going to be really productive, and it's, we're going to focus on fruit trees and, and a lot of things I haven't focused on yet. But it's a great microclimate, and uh, that will require tens of thousands of people hours of work. Or something. That sounds like a big number. I don't know. But um, seriously, I mean, you could have a team of five people just digging there for two months. I don't know. You'd have to evaluate how many hours that is. But, um, and you can't dig for all day either. That's just ridiculous. Um, you can dig for four hours if you're pretty strong, five if you're super strong. Um, I know some people that just go slow and steady, and they go a long time and they're strong. I know a guy like that here. And he doesn't look like he's working as hard as everybody else. But he works stronger. He, he moves. He, he actually accomplishes more with his actions, and and he can go longer. Um, so, you know. But most people just can't do that at all. I, I don't want to do that. I get bored instantly when I'm digging. I, I get tired. Well, now I can't walk, so I'm not gonna be digging. I haven't dug anything for two years. Um, but anyway, digging is this infinite task that needs to happen here. But I can guarantee you. As a person who wants to trade their labor in this economy I live in, you know, that you are a bad digger. <laughs> Almost certainly. You don't want to do it. And so don't try and trade me your theoretical labor Then you say you want to work hard and stuff if you can't do it. That's just, that's cheating me. You know, offer me something else. And, and, and I'm very good at being flexible on that. I actually don't want people to come here with the imagination, the, the delusion in their head that they're going to do hard physical work all of a sudden when they've never done it much in their life. You know, so 